and gents, I am the Rev, and this is Between the Stars. Welcome on back. We are heading into what could be the last of Chapter 4, if that's the case. I'm at the very end of February when the devs said they would release Act 5. So we'll see. Worst case comes to worst, we'll just... Pause the playthrough until they put five. Not like I don't have plenty of games to play. And of course, we're flying our new badass ship. Here we Whoa. go. We thought you collided with a meteorite or something. False alarm, guys. He's still alive. Mike, I owe you 200 credits. It's too quiet in here. What with how late you've been, I wouldn't be surprised if the enemy knew all of the Admiral's plans. I'm serious, Bradley. Oh. It's a trap. Of course Prepare it is. Prepare for combat! For the Republic! And everybody's shooting at him, which is fine by me. We are going to hang to the outside edges. Bradley, situation status report. Screw you! You're not my commanding officer! This is what I worried about. Too many ships. And us getting chewed up quickly. This is also part of the reason why I bought another ship. Because the other ship I had, when I tried to do this, this is about as far as I made it before I got chewed up just Good because job, there's guys. so many ships. Let's show the captain how to kill children of the sun. Bradley, be careful, you idiot! Maybe you should be careful. It's difficult to distinguish you from the children's ships. Oh, this guy's a moron. And it keeps spawning more ships in. That's what I was worried about. So. It's all good. We'll just let him get chewed up. Take off bits and pieces of the other ships as we stay at the edge. Just kind of seems like the way to go with this game. Never go into the center of combat. That your ships just aren't strong enough to handle it. I mean, it's really hard to make them OP. So, Let's see, I blew up one. Another one takes its place. Yeah, this is really melting ships. Uh -oh. No way! Another one came we won't in. leave anyone alive. I said, get back! It's too dangerous. There aren't many enemy ships left. All power to weapons. Bradley, answer! Damn oh it! Take them out! Protect Bradley's ship. Bradley's already dead. Oh, I didn't get it. Thought I would have got it. Oh, and there's still two of them, huh? All right. Get off me. Okay, son. 
You ain't gonna make it long now. I got your number. If you can stay behind them like that. Crew, prepare for boarding. We won't return to headquarters without that pool. Preparing Ooh. boarding. All right, so always a good idea. Loot everything before you go and do anything else just because there's a very good chance we won't have another opportunity here. You know, the game will just go on to something else. We'll get into another battle. We'll have to run. You never know. All right, let's see what this idiot's done. You enter the ship and see the damage from the impact of the first sight. Many of the systems are turned off while, while others lie completely useless on the floor. Luckily, the ship's life support was still active. You order the crew to search for the ship for the survivors and divide the group. Together with two men from your team, you head as fast as you can to the bridge. You advance through the corridors, avoiding the sparks that come out of the broken wires. The impact has been more severe than you thought. If there were any survivors left, it was clear they would not last long on Bradley's ship. You reach the bridge where you find the door half open, but blocked by a mountain of wreckage. It seems that the ceiling of the room has collapsed completely. Okay, come on. Get some. Four and six. Nice. What? task was especially difficult. Most of the large metal sheets and bars that covered the road were completely buried, adding that the space the gate left for you to work with was minimal. Getting to Bradley would take a while. Finally, you pull the last of the plates away, freeing up enough space to get through. One by one, you went to the control room. As you had predicted, the vast majority of the room has collapsed, burying Bradley under a mountain of metal. You look for him in the rest of the room as you quickly try to pick up any sound indicating that he's still alive. Suddenly, you hear a moan under your feet. Bradley was still alive. You remove everything you can from him while you shout for him to hold on. It was no easy task. With all the junk that had been buried him, you had to be extremely careful. A false move could make the little space he had to breathe completely disappear. You're all right, G. Between moans from the manage, uh, you managed to get to him. He did not look well. Some of the iron that had fallen had been completely embedded in his legs and arms in a deep, oh, so he's like stapled to the deck. Ow. You look up at his head and see the huge blood stain covering his face. In his forehead, a gap flows blood at a frantic rate. Carefully, you finish releasing him and do a quick examination. Looks quite shocked, but he's conscious. Ravenite, is the crew all right? The impact has been enormous. The ship is destroyed. I've sent some of my men to scour the rest of the ship. If they're alive, we'll find them. Bradley doesn't seem to understand very well what you're saying to him. What happened to the scouts? We finished them off. Bradley stays silent while you prepare to get him out of there. All you can do for now was sedate him to keep him from suffering more. That man was an idiot. But to think that you could have been the one in his situation gave you the creeps. That he was still alive was almost a miracle. To expect that his crew would suffer the same fate was too optimistic. As you inject the painkillers, you hear an almost imperceptible babbling on his lips. Thanks. With some difficulty, you get Bradley out through the gate and you place him on a stretcher to head back to your ship. The other group awaits you there as some of the surviving crew members. As soon as they see Bradley, they throw themselves at him worried, but you immediately calm down. You've sedated him. It was a good hit, but he will recover. Your captain is tough. Not to crack. I don't know. Sound like he's kind of cracked to me. Captain, we've managed to stop the bleeding for now, but Bradley has a severe concussion. Without the right equipment, he will die. Okay. Bradley has to survive. Drug him, tube him, whatever you want, but keep him alive. <laughs> yes, Captain. Okay. So where is our base? Or 
There we go. And once you go back into normal space, I'll do a quick little check and see what we got for all that combat. Oh, we got a bunch of stuff. Let's see. Oh. What's this? Plasma cannon. Oh, I need nine for that. This one. Another Mark II plasma cannon. Artillery cannon Mark One, guided missile launcher, and then yeah, I don't really care for any of those. I think that's probably the one I want to upgrade just because it's so much more powerful. Bring that whole damage up. All right, and then crew members, As always. Everybody knows their role. Oh, nobody even got hurt. That's awesome. So we'll get rid of these cheap guys. Superior quality, huh? I don't think about it. All right, so will we make it down there or will we uh, get attacked again? Let's find out. Okay. When the ship, when the ship's ramp hits the ground, the medical team runs to the medical center with Bradley in critical condition. Against all odds, the captain had arrived alive. Now, all you could do was leave him in the best hands and wait for good news. You head to the command room where Kendra Mason is. You had to report, to report the destruction of the Children of the Sun explorers and situation of Captain Bradley, the Admiral's most trusted man. The Admiral waits, standing in front of the, one of the panels where she hangs up a transmission. Captain Ravenite, I was waiting for you. Take a good look. The headquarters of the Republic under my command. A few months ago, it was all I wanted, but I never imagined it would be like this. Our army is smaller than ever. The Children of the Sun are raging through our system, spreading chaos and hunting us like flies. What do you have left when a life of dedication falls apart piece by piece? Hmm. Um, pick up the fragments and rebuild. Keep on fighting. Revenge. Uh, let's go with rebuild. Maybe you're right, Captain. We must keep pushing. Nartos will still, Nartos still wants something we have, and we cannot allow him to get it. We have, we have begun recruiting troops now. Recruits are beginning their training alongside the most capable captains. We must strengthen our ranks as long as we can, but we cannot win this battle alone. We need allies. The war with the children not only affects the Interstellar Republic, it is time for the rest of the galaxy to fight for their survival. Since the beginning of the conflict, the SMC has been affected. Many of its commercial routes have been completely closed, and even many of the f uh, faculties, facilities, jeez, a pass to the control of the children. You saw it in next year. We must meet with the corporate corporation's board of directors and secure the support of its security forces. We have fixed a hearing, and I would like you to speak up for us, Ravenite. I'm afraid you can't leave the headquarters with the current situation. The SMC controls a private army paid out of its own pockets. With what's happening. They won't be able to ignore the Children of the Sun much longer. You must make them come to their senses. 
Uniting forces is the only thing that will allow us to face the enemy of Nortos. Besides, you will not be alone. I will send Bradley and Captain Burrows and Dunn, my most trusted men. I know there are some differences between you and the commander, but the fact that you are both safe and sound shows that you can work together. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah. You almost forgot about Jesse Bradley. Your crew had been taking him to the medical center in the hopes of saving him, but his condition was quite serious. Admiral, I must inform you that Bradley's ship fell to the scouts when we were hunting him down, and we'll, we've been able to get him off the ship, but he's in serious condition. <gasps> what happened? Uh, yeah, he was reckless. Bradley went out after the scouts that remained left after the ambush. I warned him it was too dangerous. He ignored my warnings and one of the enemy missiles hit his ship. We chased the remaining children of the sun and came as quickly as we could to their rescue. We found Bradley on the bridge completely buried. The ship had been badly damaged and most of his crew had perished. Mason remained silent. The news had affected her deeply. You will leave immediately and look after our interests in the hearing with SMD. Do not fail us. Trying to disguise his concern, she advances towards the exit of the room, leaving you on her side. By the way, Captain, there has been a recruit who has not ceased to beg me to make you the captain in charge of his instruction. At first, I refused, but he was particularly convincing. He must be waiting for you at the spaceport with Catherine and the captains to take care of him. I assure you, he holds you in the greatest esteem. Okay. The Admiral says goodbye to you and leaves the room. You head back to the Thoughtful space. You head back to the thoughtful space. What? Hmm. Admiral Mason was right. If you wanted to win the war, you would have to seek as many allies as you could before the next battle. You had no idea how to convince the SMC to join in the offensive, but you had to if you wanted to win the war. You arrive at the spaceport and head towards your ship. Already from afar, you can see someone next to the landing bridge and a big chest waiting for you. As soon as you're close enough, you can distinguish the young man you had taken on the ship after leaving XE. Greetings, Captain Admiral Mason has assigned me to your ship. I thought it would be better to wait for you before boarding. All right, Pat, take stuff on in. You direct Patnik through the ship to his cabin. He had already been there for a while with the rest of the rescued prisoners, but it was a mere formality before the instructions began. That young man has personally chosen you as his captain. You would lie if you said that he did not generate a feeling of gladness in you. You arrive at the room where Patrick will be staying during his training. Normally, he would have gone through a previous training process of a couple of years, but due to the situation of the Interstellar Republic, the process has been streamlined. In any case, it was now up to you to decide when the recruit was ready to take the admission exam and officially become part of the crew you shall assist the crew in their duties oh uh oh he's a red shirt okay so engineer uh you explain the routine he must follow while traveling with you patrick will still will start helping the crew at their decks getting the grip of the task and picking up the pace was the first step to becoming a crew member the young man listened to you quietly with a slight smile on his face. As soon as he finished making a military suit, he began to store his belongings. Burrows and Dunn present, awaiting new orders, Captain. Jeez. Admiral Mason has assigned us to your command to ensure the success of the mission. Copy that. We'll leave immediately for the hearing with the Council. We'll keep the ships at a secure distance to avoid attracting attention. At the slightest setback, we'll contact each other to report the situation. At your orders, Captain. Thought I saw a red. Oh, okay. Must have been. Okay. Let's see. Alright, Imperium Ultra, we're gonna go drop this delivery real quick. But yeah, I did the bounty missions, I did all the various missions that you could pretty much do at all the stations. Cleared them all out, making money.
Space video game merchandising. You take the delivery of uh, do, do, do. the customer thanks you and you very well. Cool. All right, let's see what we got in the commercials. Now. Huh? Didn't put him in one of those slots. He's just on our ship. Should get another one of those. All right. Cloaker. Fourteen seconds. So that would probably be one of the secondaries we'd fire off. Black cannon. Yeah, you know, if I could do it all again, I probably would have put a flat cannon on that other ship instead of the laser. This laser didn't really work that well. Of course, we got more cloaking and instantly cool the weapons. And how many? Oh, I've already got two. They were pretty much good. Alrighty, folks. So when we come back next time, what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, the council and see where it takes us. Who knows? So please keep your heads down, your ships up. And I and my ragtag group will see you again real damn soon.